Hello, my name is Josephine Ness. I'm the Director of Admissions at Oregon Tech. And today we're going to go over how to submit your application for the fall 2024 term here at Oregon Tech. Now, many of you may have received an email with a link to the Advantage application or a link to our regular application, or you may find the application from our website. Currently, I'm going to start on our website on our Apply Now page. This is the Apply Now page. If you scroll down, you'll see that you can apply as an undergraduate, meaning that you have not uh, finished college, you've not earned a degree. You can apply as a graduate student, which means you've earned a degree. And then we have some of our closed cohort programs down here. We are gonna focus on applying as an undergraduate and particularly as a first year. This video is meant for those of you uh, still in high school. So you're going to click apply as a first year and you are going to create your account. You're going to put your uh, email account here and we highly recommend using a personal email account, not your school email account, uh, since school emails often block our emails. So if you have updates to your application or uh, we need something from you, if you use your school account, it may block those important emails coming through. All right, you're gonna enter your first name and your birth date. Then you're going to click continue. Now you're going to be sent a temporary pin to your email address. So we're gonna check our email. You do wanna make sure you check the promotions tab because sometimes it goes there. You're gonna copy and paste that temporary pin here. You're going to re-enter your birth date and then you're going to click log in. And that's how you're going to log in for the first time. Now you will need to create your password and you're going to want to remember this password because that's how you're going to log in from here on out. Now we're going to start a new application. We're going to click on start new application and then we're going to select the first year application and hit create application. It's then going to tell you that your application is in progress and you're going to want to click open. Now, this first part of the application is pretty self-explanatory. This is where we're asking for your personal information. So we need your name, your address, your email, phone number, biographical information, your citizenship information, just a couple of notes on here. Please enter your information here, not your parents' information. There is the opportunity later to enter your parents' information. And then your citizenship information is just used for um, data purposes, this doesn't affect your admission decision. Okay, I've gone ahead and filled out this information, so we're going to move forward to the next piece of the application. Now here's where we're asking you some supplemental uh, questions. We're asking about gender and sexual identity. You do not need to um, give this information, but we do need to ask, and we do support our LGBTQIA students. This information is in no way going to affect your admission decision. We also ask about tuition equity, including uh, DACA status or undocumented status, because uh, students residing in the state of Oregon who are undocumented or have DACA status or deferred action uh, may be eligible for in-state tuition, so that's why we ask this question. We also have some some questions about um, whether you're interested in housing, whether you've gone through a college preparatory program, whether you're interested in the honors program, and then we ask for your parent information. On the next page, we ask about your academic plan. So this is where you get to select the term that you'd like to start in. Uh, for those of you that are currently seniors in high school, that you're a senior for the 23-24 academic year, you're going to start in fall 24. So you're going to start next fall. You're going to select which campus you'd like, and you're going to select the major that you're interested in. Once you select those things, you'll have the option of selecting your home school, whether you or your high school, whether you went to high school, whether you were homeschooled, or whether you got your GED. And then we ask you whether you completed any college courses while in high school. Next, we'll ask you to enter in your high school information, which high school you went to, when you graduated, or when you plan to graduate. Most of you, this is going to be a planned graduation, and what your cumulative unweighted GPA is. So this is your GPA on a four point scale. We're going to ask you if you want to submit your SAT or ACT scores. These are totally optional. 
The next piece of the application is the self-report section of the application. This tends to be the piece that's the most confusing, so we are going to take you through this. Um, and if you need additional help, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I highly recommend you have your high school transcript in front of you so that you can accurately report your courses. So the first thing that's required is we are looking for four English courses. You're going to input these courses one by one. So you're going to put your first English course. This is the first course you took your freshman year. And then if your school gives you grades by semester, you're going to enter the first semester grade here and the second semester grade there. If your school gives year long grades, you're not going to put anything in the semester area and instead you're going to give the year long grade. Most schools do the semester system, so we're going to complete this as if it's the semester system. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to indicate the level of the English course. Was it a standard level English course? Was it an honors or advanced course? AP, IB, or college level course? This is why we recommend having uh, your high school transcript in front of you. So we're just going to go through this and we're going to enter all of our grades for our English courses. Okay, then we get to math. We require three math courses and you can see that we have a drop down of the different math that um, you could enter. So most people take Algebra 1 their first term, so we're going to go ahead and go with that. But if you took something else, go ahead and take a look at this list and select which of the other things you took. Or you can put unlisted and you can list, you can type in the name of the course here. So we're going to go with Algebra 1. And again, you enter your course level. Then we're going to put our third or our second math course here. And then our third math course. Now, if you want, you can add additional math courses. So if you took four level four math courses, or if you took three and are taking a fourth, you can add in uh, your fourth math course here, or your third, yeah, your fourth math course here. The next thing is the three required lab sciences. So again, you're gonna select the lab science that you took. You're gonna enter your semester grades and the level of the course. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in here. And then if you want to enter additional science courses, you are welcome to. The next is social sciences. We require two social science courses, and these include courses such as history, geography, civics, social studies, etc. So again, we have a drop down menu of the different types of courses you might take. And if it's unlisted, you can select unlisted and type it in here. So we're going to go ahead and put our history courses in here, our social science courses. The next one is a career or technical education, CTE, or a fine art. Now we look for one year of CTE or one year of fine art or a combination of two semesters. So if you did a semester of fine art and a semester of CTE, that's acceptable. So for here, um, these can include courses such as robotics, computer science. Um, it can include business, engineering, choir, art, music theory, anything along those lines count as a CTE or a fine art. So let's say that the student took engineering their first semester, and then they want to put in one more course because they took a fine art their second semester. There we go. And then lastly, we're looking for an academic elective. The academic elective can include um, an additional English, math, science, social science, fine art, or CTE course, or it can include something like a second language. Uh, so you can select the category that your uh, academic elective comes from. Let's say we want to put in a language. Then you're going to select the language uh, that you studied and then you're going to put in your grades. And that's all you have to do with the self-report. From here, the next sec sec section talks about military status. Um, so you can indicate whether you are um, 
currently serving or have ever served in the military. The next quest, the next section asks questions about your residency to determine whether you are an Oregon resident or an out of state resident. The last section, there are some attestations that you're going to need to read through and acknowledge. We have an option to put in a fee waiver code here if you've received one. And then finally, you are going to type your full name to um, confirm that everything is accurate. Once that's all done, you're going to review and make sure you don't have anything missing, and then you are going to hit submit. And congratulations, you have successfully applied to Oregon Tech.